What's up, guys and girls? So over the weekend, I got a chance to see the Batman. And this is going to be a non-spoiler review. But before I go any further, I just want to say this. If you want to rank this movie a 10 out of 10, I completely understand. Now, is this a perfect movie? No, it's not. But did this movie hit on the cylinders it's supposed to hit on? And did it do what it's supposed to do for me personally? Absolutely. Now, the story takes place in Earth 2's DC Universe and Batman Year 2. And I like the overall tone of the movie from how dark it is and how serious it is. I mean, we've seen some serious dark Batman before, but I think this is probably one of the closest ones you'll see to a real life adaptation. And Robert Pattinson, my goodness, he really did capture the essence of a younger, more angrier Batman. A lot of people are calling him emo Bats. I mean, you can call him what you want, but he played the hell out of this role. And as I mentioned before, he did what he was supposed to do. He gave us a Batman that we have not seen before on screen in a live action movie. But as we all know that a superhero slash comic book movie is only as good as its villain or villain. And a lot of people say that the Riddler kind of stole the show along with Catwoman, even, even though Catwoman is a anti-hero slash vigilante. And the Penguin, a lot of people will say that the Penguin had pretty much just as good of a performance as the Riddler, if not better. And we are probably going to see him in future movies. But then again, I'm kind of getting into spoiler territory here. And if you were to combine John Kramer, a.k.a. Jigsaw from the Saw series, and maybe like the real life John Wayne Gacy serial killer, that is pretty much what this villain is. And the thing is, when, he, when you finally get the big reveal, he's nothing more than a regular guy. But then again, if you watch a lot of these serial killer documentaries, that's what they all end up being. And a lot of people say that Catwoman stole the show. I would be inclined to agree because not only was she a good actor, but she had a damn good backstory slash story arc too. Once again, I'll get more to that in the spoiler review. But yes, Zoe Kravitz played the hell out of Catwoman. Probably top three Catwomans to date on screen. And the action scenes and the cinematography. <sighs> do I even need to say it? This film is shot beautifully, but with the, with the way that they do it, it's all one take. You don't really see any choppy camera angles. You don't really see too many special effects besides the explosion. A lot of this is pretty much just on the fly. And this movie, while there's a lot of action, it's not just a bunch of mindless actions and bad guy fighting and explosions. This movie has a lot of character development. There's a lot of story and a lot of depth. And that is pretty much what's going to keep you hanging on your seat, more so than the action itself. But as far as my overall rating for this movie, the action, I give it a 10. The acting, I'll give it a 10. The story and the plot, Give it a 9, 9.5. The special effects, I'll give it a 10. The character development, I'll give it a 9, but we're going to see more. And as far as the overall plot, I will give that probably a 9.5. But anyway, what do you guys think of this movie? Alright guys, this is my spoiler review of The Batman. If you have not seen this movie, you have been warned. Here we go. So the movie starts out on Halloween night and a series of murders have been taking place in the Gotham City area and the Riddler is responsible for these murders and kidnappings in the Gotham City area. And our first appearance of the Batman is in a deep dark alley in a subway where he chases this mob of clown makeup covered goons and needless to say he beats the ever loving piss out of these guys. Also one little small detail that I left out in the non-spoiler review is when you see Batman in these fight scenes you actually see him take damage. Yes Batman is a martial artist, he is probably one of the world's greatest detectives, but guess what? It shows that he's also a human being who's vulnerable. He can get shot, he can get stabbed, he can bleed, he can get hurt. And the Batman who's only in his second year of being the Batman teams up with Lieutenant Slash Commissioner Gordon to try to get a better idea on who's doing these murders. And the murderer, the Riddler, is leaving these convoluted clues to all of his murders. So for the moment, they both get enough clues in order to lead them to Gotham City's underworld. And that's where he runs into the Penguin and he runs into Selina Kyle, a.k.a. Catwoman. So with Selina's help and with some information from the Penguin, they get a little bit more detail on what's been going on. And lo and behold, things are not what they seem as far as Gotham is concerned because a lot of these big wigs and these political figures are actually in cahoots with what's going on in Gotham City's underworld, a.k.a. there's snitches and there's rats. I like that they threw that undertone in the movie in there because Bruce Wayne and the Wayne family has always stood up for morality, but things are not always what they seem, especially when there's people with money and power involved. And Carmine Falcone, played by John Turturro, he's one of the show stealers because we find out that he is the ratter, he's the informant, and he pretty much has a chokehold on Gotham's underworld. And we not only found out that he knew about what was going on with his father that they didn't want the public to get out. But we also find out that he is Catwoman Selena Kyle's biological father. And by the way, 
that car slash Batmobile chase scene with the Penguin and Batman, mwah, perfection. Best scene in the damn movie. But despite the on-again, off-again relationship with Batman and Commissioner Gordon and Gotham PD, they're still like, well, we don't know if we can trust this guy or not, and even they had a little bit of a spat with each other. But guess what? Despite all that, they did just enough to track the Riddler down. But guess what? Even though they tracked the Riddler down, he wanted to get caught because it was all part of his plan. Because to quote him, you can't stop what's coming. This is bigger than just us. And some of you may have seen this in the trailers already, but yes, the Riddler slash Eddie Nash is smart enough to figure out that Batman and Bruce Wayne are the same person. And I wouldn't necessarily say that this movie had a good ending. It definitely had a somber ending, but it gave you hope to the future. It showed that Batman isn't perfect and he can't be everywhere at once despite being a superhero, but he gave the city hope again. I could talk about this movie all day long, guys, but I can only give you guys so much in three minutes.